Hi kids. All right. This is lesson nine for uh, Eureka Math. And this is going to be one of your uh, most favorite lessons of the year because it's just about adding decimals. And I know you guys are all excellent mathematicians and you can add and like, I've been adding since I was in kindergarten. Well, great. This will be super easy for you. Um, in lesson nine, we're using unit form and the place value chart to kind of show how numbers are regrouped and what happens to them and why this is so. And we will already have taken all these notes. You can always pause the video and make sure you have all your notes uh, done and you will have all this understanding. And then on, there's a little bit more just to kind of keep talking about unit form, which is what they use in the book and kind of how you will um, rename numbers. Okay, so you will have all these notes and then we'll jump into the book. All right, so in your workbook, lesson nine, uh, the directions on this page say solve and then write the sum in standard form. Use a place value chart if necessary so you can keep your charts handy with your whiteboard marker. Um, but first we start out with unit form. One tenth plus two tenths. Well, one plus two. How hard is that? You can do it. It's three tenths. And then write it in standard form. Easy peasy. You have got this. Fourteen tenths plus nine tenths. Well, fourteen plus nine. Twenty-three tenths. And so look, the one thing that's very confusing is what are we doing and where are the equals signs? So 14 tenths plus 9 tenths equals 23 tenths, which also equals, okay, if it's 23 tenths, what's that going to look like when we finally get down here to our standard form answer? And that is 2.3 or 2 and 3 tenths. Remember the renaming. 23 tenths looks like this. So how many ones? Well, it's two ones and three tenths. And so that's what this whole section is all about, is understanding the unit form and how we can apply this to addition before we get to the standard algorithm. Um, so real quickly, let's just buzz through a few of these. One hundredth plus two hundredths, three hundredths. Make sure your place value is correct. Ones, tenths, hundredths. Okay, 27 hundredths plus 5 hundredths. We have 32 hundredths. Watch out for the equal signs, which is how many tenths? That's 3 tenths and 2 hundredths because that is 0 0.3. Oops, not bad. 0 0.32, even as I say it. There we go. So then we get into thousandths, and just be real careful, one plus two, all the same unit, makes a total of three, which looks like this, okay? And again, we have same form here, thousandths plus thousandths makes 43. So what does that look like when broken apart? 43 thousandths, I always like to come down here and say 43 thousandths in the proper standard form helps me to see the place value positions. Four is actually in the hundredths place and three is in the thousandths place because that's how you're reading it, okay? And then this one, um, if you would like to write it in standard form, you, it can always help you. Six tenths plus three thousandths because we're combining unlike terms here if you do this, it's going to help you see what the total number is of your thousandths. It's going to be 603 thousandths, which looks like this. Again, if you're combining a six in the tenths place with a three in the thousandths place, then you would end up with a six in the tenths place and a three in the thousandths. So it's 603 thousandths. Also, what can help you? is if you line things up, this is getting ready for the standard algorithm. 
And then this is what we're doing over on this side as we're all horizontal versus vertical. So much easier to see doing vertical addition. So uh, finally here, again, different unit forms, seven ones, two tenths. So the first thing I would do immediately, seven ones, two tenths, okay? This is all one number here, plus four tenths. So I, I always write in standard form. And then that is gonna help you figure out the total number of tenths. Remember, watch out for the equal sign. They don't wanna know the final answer, which is seven and six tenths until this part. So how many tenths is that? It's 76 tenths, okay? So um, so that's pretty much what we're doing on the top. Uh, I'll just toss this one out for you. Two thousandths, before we wrap it up, plus, watch out for this big long number, nine ones, five thousandths. Remember, don't say and. Nine ones and five thousandths. Don't put and anywhere else unless there's a decimal. Uh, this would give you nine thousand seven thousandths which is nine point zero zero seven now all this is to prepare you for the standard algorithm which you're gonna go huzzah that's our favorite thing and that's what this is is lining everything up according to where the decimal is now they may have two digits here okay but be careful that you line them up by where the decimal is if you're going to place the three in the tenths place, then make sure you have the eight in the tenths place as well, and then square that out by putting a zero if that helps you. And then um, add correctly, do your regrouping. This is the regrouping from the place value chart. If there's more than uh, nine, we have a double digit answer and it has to be bumped over. Don't forget to fill in the blank. These are easy peasy, you got these, okay? Any questions you can ask in class um, when you come back to our call. More on the standard algorithm on the next side. I uh, just like to caution you about the number of digits again. So when looking at the tougher problems as we turn the page, always line up by where the decimal is, okay? Place value is very, very important. You should be writing neatly so that your columns are clearly defined and you don't get the um, this wave action going on that, that knocks your numbers out of their place value positions. Line them up very precisely and we will talk about that on our Friday call as well. So, Adding carefully, don't forget to regroup every time. Decimal down, we're gonna sing Beethoven, dun, 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 dun. every single time, don't forget to bring your decimal down. And that's your final answer here. Don't forget to write it up top. Okay, so use the strategy of lining digits up by their place value. How can you do that best? by lining them up according to where the decimal is. Okay, be very careful. Uh, let's take a look at this word problem. Uh, Van Cortland Park's walking trail is one and two hundredths kilometers longer than Marine Park's, okay? Central Park's walking trail is 242 thousandths longer than Van Cortland's. So fill in the missing information. When they give you something to compare with, we're gonna start with what they give us, which is Marine Park at one and 28 hundredths kilometers. If Van Cortland's is longer than this by this much, then we would use addition as our operation, okay? So you have to kind of look. It's, we're not comparing it, we're adding to it. It's everything that Marine Park is and more. So take your one and 28 hundredths that is Marine Park and add one and two hundredths that is the extra. 
Okay, so the strategy is you really have to read the problems carefully and then show all your work. And so the total distance of um, Van Cortland is two and 30 hundredths, 2.3, 2.30, it's all equivalent. Now that you have Van Cortland, we have Central Park's walking trail is 242 thousandths kilometers longer than Van Cortland. So you have to take this amount and then we're going to tack on this much more so we can figure out uh, how long Central Park's walking trail is. So when you're adding this number to this number, line up by the decimal, 0 0.242. And we have to add it. So what do you do when you're adding and nothing is there? Well, you don't have to do anything, but if you put zeros, it'll make it a whole lot more clear. Okay, now that you have zeros, put your two, four, five, does them all down. And then 2.542, 2 and 542 thousandths kilometers is the distance around Central Park's walking trails. Okay, now if a tourist walked all three trails in a day, how many kilometers would he or she have walked? So what do you think you're gonna do? Well, you can put all these together and have your total distance. Don't forget to line them up. What if I have 1.28 and I don't have anything there? That's okay, put on a zero. 2.30, what if I don't have anything there? That's okay, put on a zero. Okay, do you have to put it there? No, but if it makes you feel happy, you can do it. And then you're just gonna add them up and don't forget to label your answer. Always label, label everything. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 4, 5, 6, uh, 6, and 122 thousandths. Don't forget to put the kilometers of walking trails. Okay. Now, the last question is, um, it's all about space on your iPod now, or iPad, or your laptop. But you guys know now that gigabytes of space, it's really important because you want your um, equipment to function correctly. So Meyer has 64 hundredths gigabyte of space remaining on his iPod. He wants to download a pedometer app, which uh, requires 24 hundredths gigabytes, a photo app, 403 thousandths gigabytes, and a math app, three tenths of a gigabyte. Which combinations of apps can he download? Explain your thinking. I'm gonna want you guys to um, work on this on your own and we're gonna talk about it in class. But think about this device with uh, all of this space that's taken up and he only has this much to work with. So if your total goes over that, then Meyer is not going to be able to use that combination of apps. So we'll talk about it more tomorrow. Hopefully, I'm sorry, we'll talk about it more after you finish the call. And uh, hopefully you guys will understand this. It'll be the easiest lesson of the year. All right, see you soon.